Leeds United have a secret transfer advantage that not many people are aware of, and it could be huge this summer and beyond. And surprisingly, it's been a very big news day, so I will get to that little transfer advantage later on in the video, but first we've got a couple of other bits of news to get through. The first one being a Patrick Bamford injury update. So, we all were a little bit worried when we saw that he'd been taken out of the squad and Joel Pirro who he brought into the squad, because... That's not a good thing, especially two minutes before kickoff, because that means that Patrick Bamford is very probably injured. Um, he is a little bit. However, as much as there are potentially fears for the future, Bamford has said that it is not too bad. And Daniel Farker has agreed, having a little bit of a conversation in the press conference after the fact. And it's understandable that there were fears for the future, because we'd been playing really well with Bamford at the helm. Piru had been a little bit wobbly in his later games. And... Having Bamford around just sort of provided a little bit of solidity and creativeness to that front line. We were okay without him, but with Bamford being not too badly injured, that says that it might be a couple of weeks until he's back at worst, and it's a very good sign for the club's momentum, especially since we very clearly have a rotation that can do a job, being Joel Piru, Matteo Joseph is coming into the line, and the only weird thing about this injury is they're apparently unsure if it's a muscle injury or a ligament problem. Normally he tends to be a little bit more certain about that, given the fact that people that work in football clubs are experts on these things. Uh, but then again, that was only immediately after the match. He'll be having tests done probably last night, definitely today, to find out exactly what the issue is, and we'll learn in the near future, presumably in the press conference ahead of the Plymouth game at the weekend. Second bit of news is a transfer potentially out, one that none of us is going to mind in the slightest. The conditions for Diego Llorente's departure to Roma on a permanent deal have now been revealed. So as we all know, Llorente is currently on loan at Roma, wasn't very good at Leeds United, has been doing a little bit better over there, perhaps the speed of the Italian league suits him a little bit more. Uh, but outside of it being a loan, there was also an obligation to buy in some certain circumstances if set conditions were met. Now, until now, we didn't quite know what those circumstances were. We had suspicions, like if Leeds United don't get promoted, then that'll probably happen. If Leeds United uh, do get promoted, but Roma make the Champions League, weird stuff like that. And until now, it had all been mostly theories and ideas on what it could be. We've had a little bit more of confirmation on sort of what one of the obligations is. And a major clause in that is that if he reaches 50% of appearances for Roma this season, there will be an obligation to buy. Now, upon seeing this, I had a little bit of a look at the data surrounding Diego Llorente at Roma, and the data says that he's been playing pretty well, and that means that he's been picked pretty often. He's made 27 appearances for Roma so far this season, with 21 of them in the league. Thinking about it, Serie A's got 20 teams. That's 38 matches. He's already surpassed that 50% level. And that has caused uh, outlets such as Il Romanista, a outlet that specifically focuses on Roman news, to say that the agreement is one step away. Typically, when they say stuff like this, it's along the lines of there is only one more thing to be done, and that will be something like a signing of the contracts, full agreement, announcement by the club, that sort of thing. Effectively, we are just waiting for it to become official. And as much as this is happening can't really have a strong opinion unless we know precisely what the fee is. In this case, 5 million euros. Not awful. Not a profit. But then again, in his time at Leeds United, Diego Llorente hardly did anything worthy of profit. And that made me think, I wonder what that means for the other players that are out on loan. So, for example, Rasmus Christensen, also at Roma. Potentially there's something going on there. Maybe it's another 50% appearances clause. I had a quick look at his appearances so far this season, and technically, in terms of appearances, he's up there. He's made 22 appearances, a hell of a lot of them off the bench, though. He's only started 13 times, so if it's to do with starts, then we might have a problem. If it's to do with appearances, we might be fine. We don't even know that that clause exists. This is just speculation on my part, but if we did it for one player, I'm sure we'd do it for another player. And that seems really competent to say that we don't want this player anymore. If he proves to be good enough for you that you have no choice but to start him, we'll definitely sell him. And that is a good part of the 49ers transfer strategy, which is our final bit of news for the day. And there's pretty good stuff in here. So the previous strategy, as we know, was dubious at best. The only thing you need to look at was deadline day 2022 summer when we were potentially signing Cody Gakpo. Didn't happen. 
Then we were potentially signing Bamba Dieng. Didn't happen. Then we were signing Willy Nonto, who wasn't a centre-forward when we were quite desperately in need of a centre-forward. And that, if anything, is an encapsulation of what happened under Victor Rota and Andrei Radrizzani. Good ideas for, like, finding talents, not good ideas for securing them, and not structured enough to make sure that it built a better squad. On style alone, in terms of meeting with other clubs, I think the 49ers are significantly better. And there is a very clear example for this, and that is in the Joel Piru move that happened last summer. So, to set the background, there was a bidding war going on between Southampton and Leeds United. Both of the clubs desperately wanted Piru because they needed someone that could finish chances. In the Premier League, our biggest issue, apart from all the goals we were conceding, was the fact that we weren't able to score. Southampton were in a similar boat, they were conceding more than they should, but if they were able to put goals away at the other end of the pitch, they would have probably been fine. Now, tradition says that the footballing aspects of both teams would have that conversation. Director of football to director of football. However, the 49ers did something a little bit clever here, and Southampton apparently hated that we did it, but genuinely smart and something that I want to see repeated very often. The 49ers reportedly jumped over the footballing hierarchy at Swansea and directly approached their owners, fellow Americans, and had a straight-up conversation with them saying, we want to sign this player from you, we're willing to offer... Comfortably market value, £11 million, can we have him? Not even mentioning Sw like Southampton as part of the conversation, which is smart to say, we will offer you this right now, let's get it done. And it was smart because it got the deal done far more directly and it guaranteed that it got it done. And having that conversation with the owners meant that you were able to sort of put them on the spot and make them make a decision at the time, rather than, well, we'll discuss it with the footballing people. It's just smart to do this, in my opinion, and it puts us in a very strong position for next season. Because next season, no matter what, we'll need to do a lot of buying in the transfer market. If we're still in the Championship, we will lose players. We will probably lose Somerville. We will probably lose Nonto. I like to think we'd keep Rutter, but it'd be very difficult. We'll very likely lose Joe Rodon or lose the opportunity to sign him permanently. But we'll be able to rebuild more effectively. And then you also have to consider what happens if we go up. Because we'll need to strengthen. That is without a doubt. So what we'll do is we will directly approach clubs and say, look, we want to buy this player. We have more money now. We're in the Premier League. Let's get it done. And that just speeds up the process and gives Daniel Farker more time with the squad. And it means we avoid the issue of August this year. It just works. And it's especially true for the likes of Joe Rodon and Connor Roberts. They're two clubs that we already have agreements with on loan. And it gets so much easier to convert it when you know that the players like it here, they want to be here, and you can just say, right, what will it take? And it cuts out so much of the shit from the conversation, and it just says, let's get it done. And that is genuinely quite smart, in my opinion. But ultimately, I want to know what you think. What do you think about the Bamford thing? What do you think about selling your rente? Will Christensen also leave? And is it a better approach from the 49ers in terms of transfers to directly approach owners and sort of cut out the middlemen? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe. I will see you later.